Good evening, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Market Watch Mondays. As always, I'm your host at Mike Me Up with two P's on Twitter. That's right, Mike. Two P, two P's on Twitter. Mike Me Up. Uh, hit me up on there if you want to talk football, shoot the shit, whatever you want to do. I'm there. Haul at me. Haul at your boy. All right. Um, I'm recording this on what is it? I'm totally losing my my freaking mind in terms of t- timing because it's been a crazy week. But okay, I'm recording this on Thursday evening. Uh, mainly because I'm going to be out all weekend. Uh, so I want to make sure uh, the editors have, editors have some time to actually edit. But yeah, I want to talk about uh, a couple topics today, mainly focusing on rookies because, as you guys know, it is rookie season and dynasty offseason because y'all know there is no such thing as dynasty offseason. We're always grinding, always hustling about the players. For me, as always, the, the, the discussion is centered, centered more around um, strategy. You know, it's more strategy focused versus actual player analysis. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about how I'm approaching this rookie draft. But before I get to any of that, man, y'all know what time it is. Hit that intro. Mm-hmm. All right, it's always an interesting time of the year, uh, rookie drafts. For you guys and who are dynasty players or new to dynasty, this might be your first ever rookie draft. These are very, very exciting because if you think about it, it's the only way to get new injected talent onto your team. You do not get to redraft. You do not get to reset. If you chose a shitty drafted team, you are stuck with it until you fix it yourself. But rookies is a great way to do it. And rookies specifically is a great way to get exit liquidity, right, uh, on some of your rookie picks. And I'll cover that a little bit later. But First, I want to talk about my general approach to rookie drafts, right? For me, I usually accumulate rookie drafts for a particular class, like like 2022 or 2023, two years in advance, because that's when you get the greatest discounted value for those picks. Um, sometimes I try and accumulate, you know, one year in advance, very, very early on in the year. But for now, uh, between now and basically NFL draft time, I don't acquire picks anymore because I've already built up my arsenal across most of my drafts. Um, Now is mostly the most expensive time to acquire, actually. So if you think about the Dynasty calendar, right, this is how I operate. I think about the Dynasty calendar, uh, the Dynasty cycle, and where the ups and downs of certain classes of assets are. Right now, uh, and between now and the rookie draft, and during the rookie draft itself, you might still have some accumulation and appreciation in draft picks because of all the main, mainstream media coverage, but this is when draft picks are going to be most expensive. And by contradiction, I mean, on the flip side of that, this is when veterans are going to be the easiest to acquire. So usually during this time, I am looking to acquire veteran players. That does not mean old players. I know dynasty players are basically allergic to anyone that's over 26 at running back, anyone that's over 28 at wide receiver. They don't have to be that old, but basically anyone's not a rookie. Um, this is a good time to acquire them. It's especially a good time to acquire some of those veterans, especially veteran wide receivers that you can buy for super, super cheap and get that production in your team uh, before before the draft hits. It's a, it's a lot riskier to buy dynasty or veteran running backs because there's a lot of rookie rookie guys coming in so you know where they land will can totally crater or tank the value so i try and stay away from from acquiring uh old uh older veteran running backs especially ones that aren't that good if you're talking about like elite guys then fine go ham like get like a saquon barkley or whatever but um but if it's like a you know kind of like a middle tier guy where you're not sure what's going to happen someone like a you know someone like a chris carson for example someone like a you know, uh, like a Melvin Gordon. Actually, Melvin Gordon's a pretty decent buy, but, you know, someone in that, like, middling zone, right? Especially, like, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, like, these types of guys where they're fringe type of starters, fringe producers, uh, they can definitely get eliminated by by talent. So I try and stay away from getting them, but it's a great time to acquire veteran wide receivers, and that's usually what I'm on the lookout for. And then as we approach the draft, right, my mindset also changes, right? Like, people think that I'm, like, a rookie draft hoarder, right? Based on what I, based on like the the mantra that I put on, and if you've ever written, read one of my draft guides, you'll know that I love stocking up on rookie picks, and I love stocking up and controlling a class, right? But when it comes to the draft itself, very very rarely will you ever see me use up all of my rookie picks in a single draft. Some people do that. Some people take all their drafts, uh, draft picks, and they use them all. But for me, knowing that usually in the first round of a rookie draft, the hit rate is only fifty percent. I don't want to have more than 50% exposure in any class because what I'm doing is basically guaranteeing myself some busts. And we have some very great tools, especially at wide receiver position, to help us uh, to help us weed out some of the busts, right? So I want to have opportunity to draft a couple of those guys, but I don't want to be forced into picking all of them. And the other reason why I, ne- I never like to have, assuming a 12-man team, I never like to have more than four to five, maybe six maximum rookie picks is this. 
in order to create a market dynamic for trading, there needs to be other players in the market. If you're someone that goes out there and acquires all 10 rookie draft first round picks, who are you going to trade with? Who are you going to trade back from, right? You're not going to be able to trade with anybody because you're basically owning the entire draft and you can only trade with yourself, right? And not everyone, it's a lot easier to trade back in a draft than it is like completely trade out or completely trade in, right? So for me, I found in my experience that having four to five rookie first round picks essentially gives you a monopoly of that class because the other people that have it, they only have one. They're very rarely willing to trade out of a class. And then the other people that have it there, they aren't able to maneuver the draft at all. So you're the, you're able to capture value because you can move up and down a couple spots here and there, add a second round pick, add a future first, whatever it is, and still land your player, and but also control the value of what people are paying for those rookie picks. So for me, the sweet spot is really four to five. So when I try, when I say I want to target a rookie rookie class and dominate and control it, that's what I'm doing. I'm targeting about four to five rookie draft picks because it, it still offers the market enough competition and dynamics so that you have trading partners, right? Because if you have 10 to 11 picks of a certain class, you basically eliminated all your trading partners. There's no, there's no room for you to trade. And it really, really brings down the market value of those picks. And in the worst case scenario, you're forced into picking, making all 10 picks. And you know of those 10 picks, you're going to have busts. It's just a guarantee every single year, right? You don't have 100% hit rate in the top round. Even with all the analytics that we have, you don't have that. So uh, I hate, I hate it. I hate it when I have that many draft picks, right? So usually I'm going in the draft with about four to five draft picks, right? What do I do from there? How do I control the draft? And how I control the draft a lot of people say you have to wait till you're on the clock to do a trade. So I disagree with that um, because that's not necessarily the peak value um, of when the draft pick is going to be at its high point. Um, all that does is it, it basically sets a timer. It sets a timer on you. It sets a timer on the person you're trading with. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily create the best dynamic. Now, I, I like to I like to basically divest of draft picks at a couple different points, right? Uh, the key hype cycles are the combine. So after the combine, everyone's running like a 4-4 or 4-3, whatever it is. You know, that player is super athletic. I sell off that hype cycle or I wait till, you know, a couple of days uh, after the NFL draft. So after, you know, landing spots, uh, you have you have another hype cycle. And that's kind of when everyone starts going all in. And here's the thing, right? People think that when you're on the clock, that's the best time to trade. But like I said, that, kind, that, that time to trade basically ties your hands a little bit around your back almost because you're on a timer and also they know that there's ne not necessarily a player that they want. That's the one thing. The second thing is you, when you trade before the draft, you can, you can trade people an empty promise, right? Like, Hey, your guy might fall that guy you want, that guy you want. He might not go 1.01. He might not go 1.02. He might go 1.03. They still have that option value and that, that hope, right? Hope is what you want to sell in a lot of these market dynamics. And they still have the hope they can land their player. So I've found personally that that's when I usually I get the highest price is, you know, leading up to the draft. I don't necessarily have to wait till I'm all the on, on the draft, especially if you're trading like an early pick, right? A top three, top four pick. I think you can start marketing that before the draft so that in the worst case scenario, <clears throat> when the draft comes, then you can execute that trade really quickly. You're not on the time. You're not that guy that's burning four hours on the trade clock every single time that everybody in your league hates. Don't be that guy. All right. So that, to me, that's how I really approach the draft. Right? I want to, I want to start engaging in trades and executing a couple deals. And usually if I have five, four to five first round picks in the draft, I normally only end up using one or two of them. Right. And what do I do with the other ones? I trade out for future first round picks. I trade out for multiple second round picks. I trade out for a second round pick plus a future pick. And I trade for veterans, especially on teams where, you know, if I've targeted this, uh, a certain year uh, of draft picks, usually that means my team is going to flip from rebuilder to <clears throat> top end contender in that year. So I'm looking to add veteran pieces onto my squad. Like I said, the best veteran pieces to add at this time are wide receivers. And I talked about some of the top targets of mine in the pr in previous episodes. So you can go back to that. Uh, the last Market Watch Monday last week to, to look at some of those players like Devonta Adams, Stephon Diggs, uh, Deontay Johnson, who's a favorite of mine, right? These are all possible guys for you to target using those rookie first round picks. And given this class is not necessarily the strongest at running back or quarterback, um, it's the strongest at wide receiver. If you can just swap out that wide receiver for another really, really productive high end asset, why not do that? Why not do that? So I'm, I'm a big fan of trading for veterans. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan at all of using the, all the rookie picks. I think that is probably the, the least, um, least, uh, expected value that you can do move that you can do. Cause if you think about it, right. If you follow my plans, like you usually acquire rookie picks one to two years in advance, right? 
And when you acquired that pick, it was super cheap. So why would you not flip that out for more guaranteed safe production and realize those gains? But because if, if you just wait and pick, you're not necessarily realizing any gains, right? You're just using that pick on a player. Whereas, you know, you, you probably acquired that pick for like, let's say, you know, one third of Stefan Diggs's value like a year ago, right? Now you can take that pick and trade for a Stefan Diggs at full value and effectively realize the gains, right? So that's how I like to think about it. If you never trade the rookie picks away, you're technically not fully realizing the value that you've gained. You're definitely not realizing the safe uh, safety and acquiring the high level production that you can be, be realizing, which is another thing. And particularly with this class, like I said, there aren't that many strong quarterbacks and there aren't that many strong running back candidates, right? I, that's why I have wide receivers at the top of my list. Though. I still have Traylon Burks up there. I still have Garrett Wilson up there. I still have Drake London up there. Cause I think these guys are a lot more safe uh, locks for draft capital and based on their production profile, a lot better hits than some of the more sketchy running backs and quarterbacks that are out there. Like I know everyone loves Malik, Malik Willis, right? Like it's possible that he's the next, you know, next Trey Lance, you know, maybe, maybe that's the case, but I, I still don't know if he's going to go in the top 10 picks. And that worries me because if you're a quarterback and you're not going to the top 10 picks, the hit rates aren't that great. So I think for this class in particular, if, if I'm loaded up on some of these picks, which I am across some of my leagues, I'm looking to flip out for a lot of veterans, right? And I'd be okay this year. Honestly, I would be okay with flipping out all of my rookie picks for veterans in some cases, because veterans, as I mentioned in the prior video, are going at an extreme discount, extreme, extreme discount. You're getting guys like Russell Wilson, in the late third, early fourth. You're getting Saquon Barkley in the late fourth. If I can trade out any of these rookie picks for Saquon Barkley, I'm getting Saquon Barkley every single time, man, every single time. Uh, Stephon Diggs, Devonte Adams, these are guys you can probably get for early first round picks, and I'm I'm definitely doing it if I have a team. So I think approaching this year, um, I'm definitely much more open to taking my rookie picks and flipping them into veteran production because it's just so cheap. It's so cheap. Normally, it's already cheap to acquire veteran production for rookie picks, but this year it's even cheaper. Just based on the startup ADP that I'm seeing, it is insane how much value there is at the veteran position, you know, from running back to wide receiver to even quarterback. Like if you don't have confidence in a lot of these quarterbacks, you can go out and get a Kirk Cousins for probably a mid to late first round pick. Okay. And Kirk Cousins has been a great producer. He's a great quarterback too to have in your super flex. He could even be a great quarterback one if the rest of your team is really strong, but no one likes him because he's not sexy. He doesn't hold value, but you know, when it push comes to shove, you can trade that shiny new toy, that shiny new Matt Coral, Kenny Pickett for Kirk Cousins, and I will take Kirk Cousins all day long, right? So there's so many options for you guys out there. And personally, for me, I'm going to be approaching this draft with that type of strategy and that type of mentality. I'm not looking to make five, six picks. I'm never looking to make five, six picks, but this year in particular, I'm probably looking to even trade out. And the reason why I say trade out instead of trade down the line is because 2023 is already so hyped up as a class. It's going to be very, very hard for you to flip your 2022 picks for 2023. You're probably going to give up an early 2022 pick just to get a random 2023 pick. And you, and I don't even know if you can do that, right? So it, it's getting very, very risky. So that strategy is not going to be very good. And if you're trading back, you're mostly probably going to be trading back for second round picks and 2024 first, which it, which I am very much in favor of acquiring. They have, you got Travion Henderson in that class of so one of the top running backs, um, almost on the same level as Bijan Robinson, just, just in, you know, his size, speed, athleticism, ability to catch, um, obviously not on that same level yet, but I'm saying he's kind of approaching there in terms of value. If you guys follow the Devi community, Devi community loves Travion Henderson. So, you know, that's going to be a very, very sought after class. And there's also a lot of other really good players in that class as well. Uh, so, there's a lot to go after. So I would personally avoid trying to trade for 2023 first. They've all, it's almost like 2023 first round picks have already realized like full value. If you play in any type of competitive analyst type of league like that, everyone knows the 2023 class is going to be strong. So it's like their value has already been almost fully realized. So don't try and target them. I would try and target 2022 second round picks and 2024 first round picks and veterans. Those are my three top assets that I'm going to be going after when I'm trying to trade out of the 2022 rookie class. And for the most part, I think I want to be picking from the mid to late first round because there's so much uncertainty. Like there's people like me, right. That, that rank all the wide receivers highly. And there's other people that swear by never ranking wide receivers highly. They always want to go quarterback or running back. Normally I prioritize quarterback running back too. I just, I'm just not sure about the draft capital yet. So if you're drafting ahead of the draft, 
I think taking that middle middling pick like 1.05, 1.08, that's a really, really good range to be in because you can get the value of a wide receiver while other people take risks on quarterback and running back that you don't want to take. So there's a lot of options out there for us. Uh, for this rookie class. So I hope that you guys are able to go out there and capitalize on a lot of that stuff. I know that I'm going to be studying some of these trends even more. I'm working on the BDG draft guide. I think, you know, I'm going to have a lot of the same principles that I had in prior years, but I think I'm going to be shifting a lot more towards the application side this year in terms of drafting veterans because I really do think it's a fantastic year to draft a team that you can win with right away. There's no better year than to draft win now teams now. And the same thing goes for rookie picks. You can draft the win now in your rookie picks by trading out into veterans, like I just said. So I think you can do a dual path, right? Whether you're in a startup, whether you're in a rookie draft, my mantra this year is going to be draft to win. And I know that sounds stupid because you always want to draft to win, but most of the times I'm drafting to win two, three years down the line. This year, I'm mostly going to be drafting to win in that year. Um, unless my team is total freaking trash, then obviously I still need to stick to the rebuild. But for the most part, if I have a lot of draft picks, my teams are usually ready to flip that switch and I'm going to be targeting like heavily, heavily, heavily the veteran base, um, because there's just too much value to be had there. Um, that's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, it's a much shorter one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, please head on down, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. And uh, so you can hit the notifications as well. So you can get notified when I, you know, Noah, the other Noah, uh, the Godfather himself, when any of us uh, make video content throughout this off season that can help you out. So if you guys enjoyed, please make sure you head on there and do that. Until next time, peace.